morning, everyone. Um, my name is Christine Perigo. I'm one of the GAMAL educators. I specialize mostly in the computerized side of things. And I just wanted to take a little bit of time in our darkened studio so you can actually see some of the real quilting that I've done. So I can show you the real world results of what I use Creative Studio's fill feature for on a daily basis. Um, the fill feature, I think, is one of the things that absolutely makes Creative Studio the best um, software on the market at this point. Um, the fact that I can go and replicate a lot of what hand guiders do with my computerized software makes it one of the best things bar none. So you probably don't want to see me talking a whole lot in a dark studio, but I bet you want to see some quilts, right? So I'm going to walk you through a couple of my quilts. And like I said, I have the lighting a little bit dark so you can actually see the quilting. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take the iPad and walk you through a little bit of it and then show you some of the bits on my screen that help me get to where you see the results. Okay, so this is one of the quilts that I've recently finished in the last year or so. I call it my fabulous floating frames quilt. But I've used fill a lot on this quilt, not just for all of the background lines, Right, so a lot of these background lines in here, but also for some of these main elements, so you can see the big square, right, in the red thread, goes and dives under that border. Well, I could not do that if I did not have that fill feature because I can f go ahead and divide that pattern and do two separate fills, one on this side and one on that side, okay? So I'm going to walk you over a little bit more of this quilt, right? I have this big element up here. This is part of my deep V pattern that I like to use a lot of. Again, two different fills, one on this side of that border and one on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and show you my screen of all of the quilting that I did on this quilt. And I made it all black so you could see it a little bit better. But you can see where I have different patterns on this side of that border than I do on this side. And there's that square we were looking at with the red thread where it's half on one side, half on the other. And all of the background, these straight lines, all of these are done with separate different fill operations and I can get those fill operations to be absolutely perfect because I'm using the laser in my machine head to identify spots on the quilt so those stitches go exactly where I want them to be but you can see there's one section from one of those fill operations and there's another section right so I just wanted to kind of show you some of the different options it gives you. So the next one, quilt that I want to share, we're going to go ahead and move this one off. So this quilt is my synaptic relapse quilt. It's actually hanging out in the virtual quilt show gallery right now under the computerized section. And you're probably wondering why I can use this quilt in, when I'm talking about fill. And it's because all of these smaller sections, the quarter circle sitting there, I actually use the fill feature to create those patterns. So let me show you exactly how that's done. I have a set up in our software so I can show you how I created those patterns. 
So I'm going to pull up a different tab in Creative Studio. So this is the setup for that quilt. And while I have these other circles in here, they're just for me to spatially lay out all of my patterns because I'm just focusing on creating one quarter of those patterns. So I'm focusing on the quarter of those patterns in that blue circle. That's my boundary that I'm going to be using for this fill operation. So as long as I put my sew order correctly on all of these patterns, I can actually use fill to give me a brand new pattern. So I'm going to come up and select all the patterns on my screen. And then I'm going to right click and come down to the fill operation and tell it to fill inside. At which point I get just this corner unit, right, which is something that is very stitchable. I can actually control, again, which part of that pattern stitches first. And that's the exact pattern that you see down on this quilt. So that's this one quarter circle pattern that we literally just created by laying out those patterns correctly and using a fill operation. So I can save that brand new pattern that Phil gave me because it combines all of them into one as a brand new pattern and use it over and over again on any of the other quilts. So if that eye candy wasn't enough, I was going to show you the quilt that I'm working on right now. So this is a pattern that I've kind of been playing with in one of my classes that is available out on the virtual quilt show right now. It's my Simple Clicks Powerful Tools class. And this is just a very simple spiral pattern. But I've used some of Creative Studio's features to kind of play with and stretch that pattern out into a very modern design. But you'll see all of those orange sections, I've used the fill feature to go ahead and avoid stitching in those areas, right? So your fill feature is not just for filling behind applique or getting the background of your quilting done. You can actually use fill not only to do a stunning, amazing, you know, show quality work, but you can use it to go ahead and create some more patterns that um, you can use later. So let me go ahead. I'm just going to show you the screen for this quilt real quick. So I'm going to come back here, and it's on another tab. So you can see that's just as far as I've gotten on this quilt. So you can see all of those patterns I've laid out there. And then I've used the fill feature to go and fill around the outside of all of those sections. So just a little taste into what fill can actually do for you. Again, I'm going to put this other quilt back up. And this quilt, I just want to remind you guys again. Go check it out. If you want closer pictures of this one, you can always go to the virtualquiltshow.com and go into the gallery section. There's a ton of beautiful quilts out there. This is one of the quilts in that section, specifically in the computerized section, right? Because all of these quilts were completely done, 100% computerized. And again, this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love that fill feature in Creative Studio. So I just thought I'd share a little bit of my quilts and a little bit about how I get to some of the results that I get. Are there any lingering questions out there before I sign off? 
remember to go out to the virtual quilt show. Not only look at those quilts and vote on the quilts that you like to see for viewer's choice, but also go check out all of the classes. We have some amazing teachers that are teaching classes. I happen to be one of them. I'm teaching not only my Creative Studio class, but also a drawing and design class on how I design a lot of my quilting. So if there's not a whole lot of questions, I'm just going to go ahead and sign off. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed a tour of a little bit of eye candy into my world of Creative Studio and the fill feature. How did you piece the blue and white quilt? So I'm assuming this is the blue and white quilt. Um, it's actually black, but um, this entire quilt is pieced with straight seams. And so there is not a single curved seam in this quilt. This quilt, the only reason you see those curves is because I've left them unquilted and your eye sees the curved part that I've left unquilted. So the curves are actually designed into the quilting design, and there are no actual curves in the piecing. Someone want to see the back of the quilt? Okay, someone wants to see the back. So there's the back. It's a little bit hard to see the quilting on the back, and it's just because um, you have a pattern print on the back. But you can kind of see a little bit more in those areas. I used some of those leftover blocks from the front on the back. This is actually a pattern. The quilt pattern itself is a pattern from Carrie Wojciechowski. It's one of the quilts of the month for the Modern Quilt Guild. Um, so her original quilt was in a dark blue background, a batik, and you couldn't hardly see the quilting. So I wanted to go ahead and create another quilt that I could share all of the amazing quilting I've done on it. So I recreated it, used her pattern to create one with a white background so you can really see all of that quilting. Can the quilting only be done with CS7? So can the quilting be done with CS7? Or um, only? While I, have, while I am currently using CS7, uh, I have been using Creative Studio since 4 or 5, I can't quite remember which version, um, but the fill feature has been available from the start, so it's in 5, it's in 6. The only thing 7 allows me to do a little bit better is the fact that, you know, fill works a little bit better in 7 than on 5 or 6, but you can absolutely use the fill feature no matter what version of Creative Studio you're using. Um, so there's a question on whether both of the classes at the virtual quilt show that I'm teaching are Statler classes. I am teaching two. Only one of them is a Statler or Creative Studio class. The other one is just a general quilting design class and does not actually require you to even own a sewing machine or a long arm. It's just talking about the design and how to design the quilting over the top of the piecing. And then there was, a, is that ruler work? Um, so there's a question if I do any of this with rulers. Well, while I have learned how to use a ruler, um, I don't do a whole lot of ruler work at all. In fact, because the Creative Studio and the Statler knows how to do straight lines relatively easily, I actually usually do most of my quilts 100% digitally, and I use that fill feature in Creative Studio to get those effects where it's a straight line and it just absolutely meets the edge of the next design. It goes right up to the piece. Okay, so if there's not a whole lot of other questions, like I said, I want to leave you with go ahead and go out to virtualquiltshow.com, check out that gallery, the quilt gallery, vote for your favorites. Um, 
And again, if you want to go ahead and take classes, we have a ton of closed classes out there. Um, and we definitely look forward to providing you with a lot more education opportunities coming up through GAML directly in the short future, in the near future. So again, my name is Christine Paraga. Um, I'm one of the computerized educators for GAML. So we'll see you again soon. Bye.